to Halleck, the referee is Spencer Wolf. He's ready and so are we as we're underway between the Colonials and the Skylands Kings. This is Christopher going behind his own net and losing possession of the puck. Jeremy Dravage goes back to the point. McEnany thought about the shot, now swings one on through and Allison directs it into the corner. Kings looking to clear as it'll be Christopher once again. Trevor Christopher recently named one of the captains of the Skylands Kings team. Tried finding Hibbert up ahead, but that's cut off by Donovan. Donovan sends one off the back of the net. Joseph Arnold in for the Kings, trying to dig it on out. A pair of reinforcements for both sides, but it'll be Colby, or rather Brandon Cope, who's unable to clear of his own just quite yet. Colby Donovan will give back to McEnany, and this time they'll have a bit more time. Here's Kyle McEnany over the red line. I mean, it's a good chance by Maverick Skeens trying to force his way in, but the Danbury Colonials need to get back more as a five-man unit to prevent that chance. Justin Heiler will be credited with the goal. It is his fifth goal of the season. And Casey, it looked like Shane O'Brien was kind of screened on that shot. It did, yeah. O'Brien doesn't get beat down low very often. He's got such strong and mobile legs. It's very rare to see one squeak underneath the pads like that. So looking to respond is Dylan Weber. He had a hat trick in the Danbury Colonials last game. Instead, he gave it along for Franklin Barry. Barry softly up ahead for Misha Mishar. Mishar in the corner, trying to get possession of the puck, beaten to it by Trevor Souza. Arnold unable to clear. Hibbert sees it go over his stick, and Allison will leave it behind his net. This is a Skylands Kings team that seemingly remembers every goal they've given up in the three losses to the Danbury Colonials as they're firing on all, on all cylinders right now. And why not? They're sitting third place in the Northeast Division. They're trying oh to make my. some headway. <laughs> oh, you know, Casey, in yesterday's game, we taught Mike, Palam or check that, that is Dravage. Dravage sends it on goal. Dravage, now his pass knocked away by Dylan Dinzik. Just about five minutes gone by here in the first period, and Casey, at least we're seeing some offensive life from the Danbury Colonials. They're getting their full weight behind the shot. It's a nice move there by Mastroni to get a shot off. And another backhand shot, this time by Dravid, went wide. Trying to get the puck onto his stick is Nick Ferrari. Ferrari gets it over the blue line, but sent right back in by Franklin Barry. Too bad that's offside. Sends the puck on his stick again. Caught just as quickly from behind by Arnold. Five players trying to dig the puck out. Broussard will turn back to the near side. Tries to give it along to Arnold. Turnover and then swung wide of the cage by Dylan Weber. Now Clark. James Clark, the other captain, or rather one of the alternate captains on this team, gives for Broussard. Broussard's pass goes off the back of the cage. Clark sees this bounce over his stick. At the point, it's kept alive by Kevin Remsen. Good keep in by Remsen. Those are some soft hands to chop that down. It was a bouncing puck on him. Back the other way come the Kings. Here's Trevor Souza, the defenseman. Remsen able to separate him from the puck. See, Clone. that's the difference there on that first goal from Skylands. Remsen wasn't able to take the body like that. That's a great example of how to better yourself. And that's going to be a penalty. The hot. And they have some of their heavy hitters out there on the ice right now. You're certainly right about them being hot. They are ninth overall in the league, converting on 34.9% of their chances as that one goes off the top of the glass, manages to stay in play. Don't usually see that before it's picked, forked out of the zone by Thomas Hoffman. So the Colonials, as mentioned, converting on 34.9% of their opportunities on the kill. The Skylands Kings kill off about three quarters, 76% their efficiency. Into the zone, this is Dylan Weber. Weber will chip it along the boards where it finds Colby Donovan. Back for Kyle McEnany. McEnany and Donovan will switch spots. Now Donovan with it again. He plays catch with McEnany. They'll rotate along the umbrella. McEnany sends one on goal. Never made its way through to Allison. Picking up the loose puck is Brandon Cope. He gives along for Donovan. Donovan, Cope, has McEnany at the point. They'll switch spots as Cope gives it along for Connor Lefkoff. Lefkoff on goal. That's blocked by Christopher in front of the net and cleared out of the zone by Hoffman. Well, the Colonials were all converging on one point in front of the net. They just got in a little bit too close. If the one player on the right wing hangs back just a little bit, he would have been there to patrol that rebound. They got a little bit too antsy. McEnany's dumping finds its way onto the stick of James Clark. Clark will dump it on down. O'Brien. Swings it along for McEnany behind the net with under 40 seconds to go on Danbury's first power play. Here's McEnany, tape to tape up ahead for Cope. Brandon Cope caught from behind by Hibbert. Collected 
by Brady Hill. He'll send it on goal. Allison, Connecticut, Nate Mastroni, five foot four, 122 pounds, but he's a hockey player. Here's Kyle McEnany at the top of the circle. His shot goes wide. Brandon Cope will keep the puck in the zone. Cope has a left cough with him and gives to him. Left cough back for Cope. Cope back to left cough once again. Looks like the Skylands Kings are being a bit more aggressive on this second penalty kill. Danbury's 0 for 1 so far. Here's Hello. Colby Donovan, a turnaround shot. That's blocked by his teammate Dylan Weber in front of net, and the Kings can clear. The Kings are starting to pressure the puck carrier a little bit more. They want to force some snap decisions for the Danbury Colonials. Especially if the Colonials are keeping the puck as close to the blue line as they are in their umbrella formation. Here is Mastro, or check that McEnany. Up ahead for Brandon Cope. Cope with speed into the zone, sends it on goal, saved by Allison, the rebound right out to Colby Donovan. That one seemed to go through the five hole, but wide. Donovan picks up his own rebound for Cope. Now Donovan again, he'll fake the shot, give to Connor Lefkoff in front, they score! Called on that. No, I can't believe it either, and I can't believe that they're getting a neutral zone faceoff out of it too, because they're gonna say that it was the King's fault that the net came off. Well, you're absolutely right about that, but off that draw, Shane O'Brien looks no worse for the wear, except he turns it over to Cole Hibbert. Hibbert had it knocked off of his stick. Now this shot from the point, in and out of the glove of Shane O'Brien, then O'Brien takes a tumble in the crease. It looks like his skate got tied up with that of uh, his defender. I believe that was Lefkoff. Heiler managed to keep it in the zone. He keeps it in again, sends one that goes wide of the cage. Now it's Clark. Going behind the net for Arnold. Arnold gets dumped down from behind. Dylan Weber throwing the body there. Arnold back up to his skates, still motoring along behind the net. Now this is Hibbert. Hibbert kicked in front and it went wide. And out of the zone. Well, O'Brien is still kicking his leg out and he's still hunched over. He's still feeling it. He really is, but he stays in the game for now. This is Arnold launching one back into the Colonial's end as the Kings go for a wholesale change. Picking it up as Connor Lefkoff. That goes not off the stick of Brandon Cope. And so icing will be the call. It will be Dinzik on the draw against Brandon Cope. Dinzik wins it forward. A sharp angle attempt saved by O'Brien, but we have a whistle and stopped it. Arnold picks up his own rebound, tucks it in the near side post for his fifth goal of the season, his second on the power play. And it's a 2-1 game. Colonials looking to respond quickly as that shot comes off the stick of Zach Turner. Zach Turner making his debut for the Danbury Colonials, a native of Colorado, an 03 birth year. And Casey, we were talking to Coach Kevin Cunningham before the game. They're excited that they've brought Zach Turner into the fold. Oh, well, absolutely. Anytime you can bring some new faces in because the point, the point of NA3HL is to get players to move on to the next level. And they're going to have some people departing starting in January, playing D3 hockey as we get another delayed call coming up a cross check against Misha Mashar. Yeah, Mashar got lucky. That second man advantage is Sean Kennedy in the faceoff dot. He wins it back to Trevor Souza. Souza. We'll take a look at his options. Now he finds Kenny again on the far side. A cross ice pass attempt gets flipped into the corner. Knocked off of the puck was Joseph Arnold and the Colonials are able to clear. Allison will leave it for Hyler. Hyler sends it around for Kenny. Kenny slowly through the neutral zone. He gives it along for Trevor Souza. The defenseman at the top of the circle manages to get it a bit deeper in the zone. Colonials unable to clear. They'll have an opportunity here, though, as Kyle McEnany picks it up with plenty of open ice. Two on two into the zone. McEnany gives it across. Fanning on the shot was Nate Mastroni, and then Mastroni goes down very awkwardly into the boards. That's going to do it. Score is tied at two as Colby Donovan on this draw for the Colonials with a little help from his friend Zach Turner. Colonials will control. Connor Lefkoff off the boards for Turner. The 16-year-old has it knocked off of his stick and then an open mic in the PA box really gives that sound to the rest of the crowd here. And they came together after the play there as well. They're fortunate they didn't get a penalty because that was uh, the, Dan the Danbury Colonial player charging after the player after the whistle. That was number 18, Zach Turner. Yeah, usually... Especially with the referee right in front of you, it's usually not advised to do that. You run that risk of getting called for the retaliatory penalty. It's a good job by Turner to start skating away. Ferrari up ahead for Mosian. Mosian tries giving a long for Souza, who jumped up in the play. Souza tripped up on the play, but play continues. McEnany along the boards for the Colonials. 
four, five, now make it six players. Eventually it's Colby Donovan who comes up with it. And Donovan sees the C's part in front of him. He'll give it along for McEnany. McEnany to the outside, a backhand shot saved by Allison. Out of the zone, right onto the stick of Kyle McEnany. He thought about going after it again. Instead, he'll turn back and look for an option. And the wrong option was Cole Hibbert, who has the puck. His shot from the top of the circle gets deflected away. Arnold, he'll take a shot. Puck comes out. Clark, the one-timer, gets blocked. Some ugly play in the Danbury zone, but they're able to clear with 2.45 to go. Well, Kyle McEnany took that initial chance and he wanted to go for it a second time. And it's Being on the same team as, well, especially here at the junior level, you spend plenty of time together. So the Colonials back on the power play. It's Kyle McEnany controlling. His shot gets blocked, but kept alive by Connor Lefkoff only for a moment before Cole Hibbert is able to clear. Good stick by Hibbert there. Donovan off sides is called as the linesman sees the pump move. That's a famous quote from Terry Frank. Well, home plate might, but these blue lines, especially <laughs> during practice, they'll jump up on you. It's, you don't always like the lines. <laughs> Here's Dylan Weber trying to get it deep. Cole Hibbert has other ideas, and he'll send it all the way back down as Shane O'Brien will nicely and politely leave it behind his own net to be picked up by Kyle McEnany. McEnany up ahead for Mastroni. Nate Mastroni can't get around the defense of Trevor Souza. Weber will recollect with under a minute to play now in the first period. Left call. This time he'll send it down deep. Allison, he'll leave it behind his net. Brassard gets met by a pair of Colonials. Dylan Weber will come up with it and go back to the point for Madsey. Now across Lefkoff. Lefkoff a shot saved by Allison. Weber again in the corner. This time he gives down low Mastroni. Mastroni on the half wall goes back up to the point. Quickly gets it back from Madsey. Pass goes across for Lefkoff. Lefkoff unable to hold the blue line. Puck seemed to get caught up in the snow there. 20 seconds to go. Perhaps time for one last rush for... Very responsible for putting the biscuit in the basket. It's just the wrong basket. This time, yes. And Shane O'Brien, again, injured in the first period. We keep an eye on his left leg. But not much that he can do when your own teammate seemingly goes against you. This is turned over at the Skylands blue line. Trying to race up ahead, but cut off was Hoffman. Now this is Nate Mastroni. Mastroni a drive, and he misses high. That's a heck of a clapper there from Nate Mastroni. He fired that one high and wide, but he got every bit of him behind that shot. Franklin Barry rolls one in on goal. Allison just as quickly gives to Souza. King's looking to clear. Fighting through some sticks and racing ahead is Joseph Arnold. He'll send it down deep. O'Brien off the half wall, connects with Misha Mashar. And Casey, how important is it, a goaltender like Shane O'Brien, the way he's able to handle the puck, he's like a third defenseman back there. Well, absolutely. Anytime your goaltender, especially at a young age like this, has the confidence to handle the puck out of his net, there's no trapezoid here at the Danbury Arena and in the NA3HL level. So you have the freedom to kind of move out and play the puck as you see fit. And O'Brien is certainly one to handle the puck. Delayed call coming up against the Skylands Kings. Corralled by Mastroni. He'll be taken by Christopher in his own end, and he'll just loft one into the neutral zone where it's collected by Connor Lefkoff. And Franklin Berry's back out on the ice after his little equipment malfunction. Well, good to see Berry back out on the ice. Somebody who we haven't seen on the ice yet is uh, the new, one of the newer players, Jimmy Dravage, as he was getting worked on by the training staff between the first and second period. 8.56 to go here in the second. The Kings still with a 3-2 lead, and on that last power play, they recorded a single shot on goal. Looking for more is Ferrari in the corner. Mastroni, he's in there as well. Connor Lefkoff gets himself involved, but coming up with the puck is Sean Kenny. In, or check that, that was Thomas Mooglin, whose shot gets sent wide, and then Mooglin deflects one from the point. Not a bad shift for the third line of the Skylands Kings. Here's Myers. Mooglin goes back up Ferrari. Mooglin again still battling for it. Nate Mastroni has spent a majority of this shift pinned up against the boards. We have a delay of game. Yeah, it's going to puck still, and it was just kind of twirling, twirling, twirling like a spinning coin. So Donovan took a step back and said, all right, takes a swing and just able to miss the net. Here comes Dylan Weber, quickly taken off of his stick by Souza. A bouncing puck finds its way over to Connor Lefkoff, who will send it down deep. Picked up by Heiler. Heiler canceled out by Weber. Dylan Weber doing some real work behind the net of Alex Allison. 
Eventually it's picked up and taken out of the zone. Here is Souza. For a defenseman, he has been awfully active. He gets tripped up on the play looking for a call. There's none coming. Well, look how speedy he was. He was still able to forward the puck into the zone just because of pure momentum. Here's Dinzik now covering at the point. Dinzik looking for an option. Kenny and now Arnold for Souza. Souza, his shot saved by O'Brien. He finds the rebound in front of him, gets his glove down is Cole Madsy. He finds Brandon Cope. Cope, nice little move between the legs. A sharp angle attempt saved by Alex Allison. But a nice job by Cope even just to get that on goal. How he was able to get a shot on goal is beyond me. Deflected in front by Adam Palamike off the McEnany shot. He didn't miss by much. Now McEnany, another drive. That goes wide. Palamike coming out from the corner just out of his reach, and now this goes past everybody, but no icing on the play. Well, hockey is very much so a game of inches, and you saw Brandon Cope come inches away from burying one the first try, and then on that lively bounce off the end boards, if Palamike is a couple inches forward, he's able to tap that into a yawning net mouth. Here's Nate Mastroni going up against Brassard. Mastroni coming in at five foot four, Brassard at six foot five, bit of a size difference. All about center of gravity. It's all about how forceful you can be with the lower half. Left cough shot. That gets deflected into the corner. I think it went off his teammate Westendorf in front. Now it gets deflected back down into the Colonials end. Icing is called as the players right now in Dylan Weber and you've got Zach Turner on the right, ring, right wing. Let's see if the newbie can make a little bit of noise. Off the draw won by Weber. Mashar will send it around. Turner now picks this up. That's forcing one towards the front of the net on a second attempt. Gets it into the far corner. Now Ferrari, last time we saw this Skylands Kings line out on the ice, they forced a power play. Behind the net, this is Souza. Through the neutral zone come the Kings and it's sent down deep by Ferrari. He'll go off for a change as Kyle McEnany collects behind the net of Shane O'Brien. McEnany off the boards, hoping that it would get it over to Zach Turner, no sale there. Weber and Mashar. See this taken away by Christopher. Christopher goes up ahead for Dinzik. Dinzik finds Kenny. Kenny unable to tee up a shot, getting into a shoving match with Connor Lefkoff. Puck has left the area. Now McEnany up ahead. Two on one developing. Here's McEnany by himself, saved by Allison. The net's off of its moorings. And the Furry Arena, one of the more delicious barbecue spots in Danbury. Oh, very tasty. 48 seconds to go, 20 seconds remaining on four on four action. Here is Franklin Berry, leaving it along for Brandon Cope. Cope runs into some trouble, lost possession of the park. Clark can't get it much deeper. Christopher, now Clark again for Christopher. This time he'll just swing it around the board. Sean Kenny in the near side Zamboni corner will pick it up. Two seconds and one, we're back to five aside hockey. 23 seconds to go in the period. Here is Clark along the goal line. Sends one in front. It went past a pair of Skylands Kings, but at the very least, it will be a power play coming up for Skylands. They turn the puck over as Kevin Remsen frustrated. Coming in the form of the boot of the skate of Trevor Christopher. So off the draw, it will be controlled by the Colonials as they have a minute and now 40 seconds to kill off on this penalty kill. It's deflected into the zone by Zach Turner. Turner really showing the trust that he has from the coaching staff out here in the special team situation as Dinzik, most recent goal scorer. He goes over for Hibbert. Hibbert turns away from the pressure and retreats behind his own net. Right there with him is Colby Donovan and the two of them will make their way up the ice. Hibbert gets taken down from behind, no call on the play. Connor Lefkoff with an opportunity to clear and he does. Well, I think that Hibbert might have just lost his footing there. The stick didn't hit the part of his body. It was just a pure stick lift, and I think the sheer force of it knocked him onto his backside. Turner sent it around behind the net with enough momentum to feed Hibbert. Now this is Hoffman, a shot saved by O'Brien. Hoffman with a nice move to get around the referee on that one. McEnany softly into the near side corner. It'll be picked up by James Clark, but just as quickly knocked off of his stick by Zach Turner. Turned over, Colby Donovan will fly one in on goal, and Allison will leave it for Christopher with 40 to go on the power play. Here comes Trevor Christopher up. Extended shift for Skeens there, and he was able to make every minute count. Good play. Now coming in is Kyle McEnany. McEnany, toe drag, movie scores! Kyle McEnany, a 13th goal of the season. My goodness, what a move. Well, you can take the attacker off of the forward lines, but you can't take the forward out of the player. Kyle McEnany playing the blue line here today, and he's still able to find his way down low. 
Here's McEnany at the point, looking for another one. Side steps one, gives along Kobe Donovan, handcuffed on the shot. Allison steers it into the corner. Kalamike, his shot gets blocked at the point, kept alive at the blue line by Connor Lefkoff. Broussard, using all six foot five of his frame, gets it off the stick of Colby Donovan. And now Souza, off the stick of Mujin. Mujin and McEnany come together. Mujin gets it a li little bit deeper. But Connor Lefkoff is there to collect, and he'll lead the rush out of the zone. Here comes the defenseman they call lefty. His pass a little too far for Colby. Great offensive shift here by the Colonials. As Broussard finally is able to clear, picked up off of the bench, is Connor Lefkoff. He finds Cope up ahead. Cope a shot. Punched aside by Allison. Trying to clear is Hoffman. Fresh off the bench, Franklin Berry keeps it alive, but Heiler finds Dinzik on the far side, and Dinzik can clear. A pass intended for Hoffman. No delayed offsides on the Skylands Kings as it's turned over by the Colonials. Not for long. Here come Dylan Weber. Dylan Weber at the top of the circle. His shot swallowed up by Allison. He'll hold on for a face-off to his We're on the draw, and now stepping in is Dylan Dinzik. Off the draw, Remsen goes back to the point. Shot by Lefkoff is off the skates of Justin Heiler in front of a net. Now Hoffman. He'll send across for Dinzik through Dinzik's legs. Lefkoff there to collect for the Colonials as he gives along for Franklin Barry. Barry and Hoffman in the corner. They'll both tumble down to the ice. Play continues. Barry with the puck. He gives it along for Brady Hill. Hill, his pass knocked away by Dinzik and sent back into that same near side corner. This time, Barry up ahead for Hill. Hill was hit by Dinzik. And then taking a shot up high is um, behind the play. It's Brady Hill and Sean uh, Kelly trying to, or Kenny trying to get at it. We have not seen Jeremy, Jimmy Dravage back out on the ice since his injury in the first period. We'll have to keep an eye on Adam P Palamike as well as the Danbury Colonials bench seemingly gets shorter. Meanwhile, this is Hibbert with the stamina of a horse. He's been out there seemingly every other shift this game. Goes behind the net, lost possession of the puck. Mishar will send it off the far boards. Broussard will send it back in. Now Kyle McEnany. McEnany, he can certainly fly. Instead, this time his pass goes off the stick of Donovan, turned over at the blue line. Here's Clark driving to the outside. Tries cutting towards the front of the net, but McEnany gets a stick on it. Well, there's Jimmy Dravich out there on the ice sack for his first shift in quite some time. Sent over to the far side. This is Dravich trying to take a swing at it. He'll get a second opportunity, and this time from the red line, it goes off the stick of Souza down deep, and Dravich just as quickly goes back to the bench. Cranium on the, on the boards. Yeah, that's not an easy one. No icing on the play as Misha Mashar beats out the call, and then he tries feeding Dylan Weber. Arnold gets it as far as the neutral zone. Now Connor Lefkoff. Waiting for his teammates to touch up. He'll send it down deep. Allison will leave it behind the net. 5.40 to go in regulation time. Here's Hoffman. Pressured from behind and turned over by Weber. Now Westendorf with a rare shift in the corner. He comes together with Heiler. Heiler looking for a holding the stick penalty. There's none coming. Five and a half to go in regulation time. And a good job by Wes Westendorf to shield the puck away. Using his body to his advantage. This is Heiler and Wessendorf again. That's another great one-handed pass there. That's two great plays. Hoffman, he's pinned up against the boards by Weber. This time it's Cole Madsey who's helping out as well. Now Weber pinned up from behind. Trevor Christopher getting involved. Hoffman trying to dig it on out. Hoffman gets tripped on the play. Now it's going to result in a penalty. Let's see who the penalty goes against, I imagine. Biggest clear effort of the evening here for the Danbury Colonials. They need to kill off these final 60 seconds. 55 to go now in the power play. Turned over at the blue line. Franklin Barry sees a bouncing puck go wide of the cage. Shane O'Brien, I'm sure not too pleased with that. Here's Hibbert with it again. He finds Christopher sneaking in from the slot. And a, a great save. The uh, vision shown by Cole Hibbert there as oh, Christopher sneaking in from the point. That's not an easy pass to make. Oh, what aspect of Hibbert's game doesn't impress you at this point? He's been, he's been fantastic. He really has, and certainly if the Danbury Colonials escape this game with a victory, Cole Her Hibbert has nothing to be ashamed of as he's left it all out on the ice. 20 seconds to go in this Skylands power play as Heiler from behind his net gives along for Sean Kenny. Kenny had some trouble with the pass, so Heiler will try the near side. Trevor Souza is there. 
Souza caught from behind by Mastroni, but given up ahead for Broussard. Broussard tries to get it down deep, gets it as far as the far hash marks. And now Arnold turning with it as we're back to five aside hockey in under three minutes to play. Here is Heiler, a shot. That one went off the glove of O'Brien and behind the net. Another penalty coming up. It's going to go against the Danbury Colonials, and this is a sent all the way down. That'll do it for the power play. So we're back to five aside with 35 seconds to go in range. Yes, Kyle McEnany now moved up front as a forward. He's with Brandon Cope and manning the blue line. Connor Lefkoff as we're underway in the extra frame. Here is Clark. Notably, this is the first overtime game for the Skylands Kings. Let's see how their legs hold up. Souza through the neutral zone into the Danbury end. Souza blew a tire. He'll try and catch up to the puck in the corner. Kyle McEnany is there as well. Now Connor Lefkoff. Hibbert watching closely. He rides Lefkoff down to the ice. Play continues. Lefkoff and Hibbert once again. Puck in their skates. Coming up with it is Brandon Cope. And Cope will retreat behind the net and get things started once again. Here is Cope. Long pass off the boards, connects with McEnany at the Skylands blue line. He sends over far side, Connor Lefkoff not quite fast enough, and then Lefkoff tried giving back for Cope, no sale there. McEnany will have to start over once again, a minute gone by in overtime. That's the kind of back pass where you... Defenseman Cole Hibbert, once again out on the ice for an important defensive zone faceoff. Instead it's McEnany. McEnany thought about the shot, gets the puck back from Donovan, and now the Colonials will set up the power play. Here is McEnany sneaking in. Nearly lost possession of the puck as Heiler got a stick on it, but not out. Left call. Across a one-timer by Cope. He misses well wide. To the opposite side. Oh, I'm, oh a, yeah. I'm a hooker the entire way. It's terrible. Anyway, off the faceoff. This is left call. Now Cope. Top of the circle. A one-timer attempt by McEnany. Never got it off. Left call with it again. Back for Cope. Cope tries threading a needle for McEnany. Getting in the way of that was Heiler. And then it's out of the zone, waiting for the touch-up. It's knocked off of the stick of Lefkoff. Here's Hibbert, short-handed. Hibbert to the outside. He'll keep possession and very disciplined, very intelligent play by Cole Hibbert. Gives back to his defenseman. He goes off for a change, and that kills another 30 seconds off this power play. Well, the Colonials couldn't touch the puck when it was in the offensive zone. Otherwise, it would have been an offside. But recognizing that, you have to take a few steps back because you know that Cole Hibbert is bearing down on you. Either that or just touch the puck and get the whistle in the, in the neutral zone. 